everybody. It's so great to have all of you with us here as we consecrate the new moon. It's very important to the Lord that we know when a new month starts according to his calendar. So uh, we're now going to look at the month of Tammuz and what tribe also is associated with this month. We know from Genesis 1.14, we always want to begin here. God had said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be, here it is, signs, number one, signs, seasons, days, and years. Do you know the new moon is, or the start of every biblical month, is the most pivotal date in the biblical calendar? Because without the new moon, we couldn't have any of the biblical holidays. Because if it's supposed to be on the 10th day of a month and we don't know when the first day is, how could we celebrate it on the 10th day? So uh, sighting of the new moon is very important because it notifies us which days will be holy in any given month. Now I want to bring something out as well as far as the tree in the Garden of Eden. Listen to this in Genesis 2, 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. Listen to that. Pleasant to the sight. And it is good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I think it's interesting that every tree was pleasant to the eyes. Now, let's look at that's how the creation began. Well, let's look at the end of the book in Revelation chapter 22 and let's look at verse one and two. Here it says, he showed me a river, a water of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the lamb in the middle of its street. On one side of the river and on the other was the tree of life and it bore 12 different kinds of fruits, yielding its fruit every month. So every new moon, there would be a new fruit on the tree. This is incredible. Okay, now, when it talks about the 12 different kinds of fruit bearing different fruit every month, it's not going to happen on January 1st or February 1st or March 1st. God does not use our pagan calendar. It's going to be on the first day of the biblical months. All right, now, uh, it's uh, amazing to me. Look at this in Ezekiel 46 and verse 1. Now, this is during the millennial reign. And can you imagine here, uh, oops, here God said, just as the sun and the moon and the stars were all to give light, look what happens during the millennial reign in Ezekiel 46 1. It says, thus says the Lord God, the gate of the inner court that looks toward the east will be shut six working days. But on the Sabbath day, it will be opened. And then the day of the new moon, it will be open. So on the new moon, here it is. This gate is going to be open. So that means even during the millennial reign, when Yeshua is here for a thousand years, we're going to be keeping the biblical calendar with the eastern gate door opening on every new moon and on the Sabbath day. Now, what about in eternity? Let's say after the thousand year reign, new heavens, new earth, new sky. Are we still going to keep the new moon then? Listen to Isaiah 66. This is verse 22 and 23. It says, for as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, says the Lord. So your seed and your name shall remain. And it will happen, here it is, from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, all flesh will come and worship before me, says the Lord. Wow, we're going to keep the Sabbath for eternity. We're going to be keeping the new moons for eternity. So why in the world would we stop now? We need to get like a chiropractic alignment. We need to get in alignment with God's calendar so we can see the blessings. Now listen to Psalms 104. This is verse 19 through 21. God made the moon to mark the seasons and the sun knows his going down. You made darkness and it is night wherein all the beasts of the forest are creeping forth. And even the young lions roar after their prey. They're seeking their food from God. 
Now listen to Psalm 81, verse 3 and 4. Blow the shofar at the new moon, at the full moon for our feast day, for it is a statute for Israel and ordinance of the God of Jacob. So you're also supposed to blow the shofar. And I've got this beautiful shofar right here. Now I'm not real good at blowing the shofar, but we're going to try. We try. We're not as good as Curtis, but uh, we do want to blow the shofar at the sanctification of the new moon. Now, here's the thing we also have to realize. The sighting of the new moon really is all about God's covenant with David. You know, God made the sun and the moon just for King David. I'll prove it. Look at this. Psalms 89 is a most important psalm, and I'm going to highlight some verses in Psalm 89. But listen to verse 20. God says, I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him, with whom my hand shall be established. My arm also shall strengthen him. So here, this is setting the tone for Psalm 89. It's all about King David. Now listen to verse 23 and 24. God says, I'm going to beat to pieces his adversaries before him. I'm going to smite those who hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy will be with him. And through my name shall his horn be exalted. Now listen to verse 28 and 29. God says, forever will I keep for him my mercy. My covenant will stand fast with him. His seed also, that's the Jewish people, will I make to endure forever and his throne as the days of heaven. Now here it comes, verse 33 through 37. Nevertheless, my loving kindness I will not utterly take from him, nor allow my faithfulness to fail. My covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His seed shall endure forever and his throne as the sun before me. It will be established forever like the moon, even like the faithful witness in the sky. The sun and the moon are God's faithful witnesses that his covenant will never end with the Jewish people. Matter of fact, listen to Jeremiah 33, verse 25 and 26. Thus says the Lord, if my covenant is not with day and night, and if I'm not the one who appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then I will cast away the descendants of Jacob and David, my servant. So we know that is never going to happen. Now, in Exodus 12 and verse two, God tells Israel, this month shall be the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So this calendar is not necessarily for the world. It's for God's people. And if you consider yourself one of God's people, then you need to be acquainted and be on his calendar. So let me ask you this. Do we make ourselves holy or does God make us holy? God makes us holy to him. We can make ourselves holy to somebody else, but not to God. God is the one who makes us holy. But we're to maintain our holiness. Listen to Leviticus 20, verse 7 and 8. God says, consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am the Lord your God, and you will keep my statutes and perform them. I am the Lord who makes you holy. So the way God makes us holy is by giving us his commandments, and the way we make ourselves holy is by obeying his commandments. This is why in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26, it goes on to say, And you shall be holy to me, for I, the Lord, am holy. I separated you from the nations that you would be mine. And then we see in Leviticus 18 how we're to maintain that holiness. Therefore, he says, you shall keep my charge that you do not any of these abominable customs which are done before you. Don't defile yourselves with them. I am the Lord, your God. With that said, let's stand and let's say the prayers of sanctification for the new moon. And I have it up on the screen uh, so all of you at home and those that are here with us can say this prayer together. May it be thy will, Lord our God, 
and God of our fathers, that you begin for us this month for good and for blessing. May you give to us long life, a life of peace, a life of goodness, a life of blessing, a life of substance, a life of physical health, a life in which there is fear of heaven and fear of sin, a life in which there is no shame or humiliation, a life of wealth and honor, a life in which we love Torah and fear God, a life in which the Lord fulfills the requests of our hearts for good. Amen. Say la. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who created the skies by your word and all of heaven's host with the breath of your mouth. You gave them appointed times and roles, and they never missed their cues, doing their creator's bidding with gladness and joy. You are the true creator who acts faithfully and has told the moon to renew itself. It is a beautiful crown for the people of Israel who are carried by God from birth and who will likewise be renewed in the future in order to proclaim the beauty of their creator for his glorious majesty. Blessed are you, O Lord, who renews the moons. Uh, blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and commanded us to be a light to the nations and has given us Yeshua, our Messiah, the light of the world. Amen. Okay, you can be seated. And now I'm going to give you a quick teaching on the month of Tammuz and the tribe of Reuben. Okay, <clears throat> now we've already gone through the first three months of the year. Nisan, which is the first month, Iyar, and then Savan. And we saw how they each lined up with the three tribes. Okay, so I have on this chart uh, the eastern tribes where they were positioned. And those refer to the springtime. And we're now entering summer. Okay, and Reuben is in the south and he was the leader. And Reuben is tied to the month of Tammuz. Okay, um, let's see. Now, Tammuz is the month of the worship of the golden calf. So this is not good. This happened during the summer. OK, now Reuben's name means to look or to see. Uh, Leah was so glad she had her firstborn son. And she says, look, a son. And so she named him Reuben, which means look, a son. Now, the next month, the month of Av, is Simeon, which is from the root Shema, which means to hear. So the first month of summer is sight, and the next month has to do with Simeon and the hearing. And that's what God wants us to work on, our sight and what we hear, who we listen to and who we obey, uh, as well as what we're looking at. All right, so here we go. Uh, we see Reuben is tied to the golden calf. In Exodus 32, 4 and 5, Aaron received the gold from their hand. He fashioned it with a graving tool and made a golden calf. Here, later on, Aaron tried to lie. See, this golden calf came out all by itself. But no, that's not what happened. And it says, uh, they said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. So it has to do with sight. Uh, what's interesting is the four Torah portions that are read during the month of Tammuz all have to do with sight. You have Shalak, the spy seeing the giants. You have Korah, Hukat, and Balak. So let's look real quickly at each one. Uh, we know that the 10 spies begin their search right beginning at the month of Tammuz. And in Numbers 13, 25 through 28, they return from spying out the land, okay? And it says uh, they brought a back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. So they're showing them these big grapes. And it says they told them and said, we came to the land where you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey. And this is the fruit. However, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak. And then in verse 33, again, we saw the giants and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. So we were in their sight. So you see the whole concept of physical eyesight all through this. Now look at Numbers 15. What does God end that Torah portion of Shalak with? How it says that they're to make fringes on the hems of their garments that they may look on it and remember the commandments of the Lord and do them and that you don't follow after your own heart and your own eyes. How often do we follow after our own heart and our own eyes? We can't do that. So we see all that talk about sight 
in the Torah portion. Well, let's look at the next one. For the next week of Tammuz, we have Korah. Let's look at number 16, 14. Moreover, Korah says, you haven't brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey. You have not given us an inheritance of fields and vineyards. Are you going to put out the eyes of these men? We won't come up. In other words, they're saying, look, we're, we're, we know what we see. You're lying. And then in Korah also, number 17, 8. It says it happened on the next day. Moses goes up into the tent of testimony and behold, what did they see? Aaron's rod had budded and put forth buds and produced blossoms and ripe almonds. So now God is showing the rebels. If you want to look at something, see this. A dead branch cut off from the tree is producing fruit. Now we go to the next Torah portion, Chukot. Okay. In Numbers 21, 6 through 9. The Lord is so mad, he's sending fiery serpents and they're biting everybody. And many, it says, in Israel died. So the people come to Moses and they say, OK, we sinned. We've spoken against the Lord and against you. Please pray that he takes away these fiery serpents. So Moses prayed for the people. And look what the Lord said. Make a fiery serpent, set it on a standard and it'll happen. Everyone who is bitten, when they see it, when they look at this, they'll live. So Moses made a serpent of brass, put it on a standard, and it happened if anyone was bitten, when he looked toward the serpent of brass, he would live. Now, both times, I think this is interesting. Both times they see a fiery serpent, but their perception changes when they look up. What happens, there, there's, there's all these fiery serpents that are attacking them. Okay, that's what they see. But then God says, OK, put a fiery serpent on a staff and they look at that. How come one fiery serpent is killing them and the other fiery serpent is healing them? It has to do with your perception. How do you perceive these fiery serpents? And the key is we have to look up. All right. Then the last one, Balak. Well, listen to Numbers 22 too. Balak, the son of Zippor, saw everything Israel had done to the Amorites. Verse 23, the donkey even sees an angel. Verse 31, the Lord opens the eyes of Balaam and he saw the angel. Uh, Numbers 25, verse 6 and 7. Behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought to his brothers a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel. While they were weeping at the door of the tent of meeting, when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, he saw it. And he did something. He shish kebabbed them. Okay, so here's the thing we have to realize as we wrap some of this up. All of us see things differently. The husbands and wives see things differently. Their kids see things differently. The neighbors see things differently. Everyone can look at the same thing and have a different perspective. But we also have to remember that Messiah doesn't judge by the sight of his eyes or by what he hears. Listen to Isaiah 11:3. He will not judge by the sight of his eyes, neither decide by the hearing of his ears. OK, now I'm going to change gears here. This is going to blow you away. Fasten your seatbelts. We're going to go to Esther chapter three and verse two. This is so important. I'm going to stop and take a drink of water. This is going to be mind blowing. Are you ready? Esther 3, 2. Everyone knows the story. It says all underline all all the king's servants that were in the king's gates bowed and reverenced Haman for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Oh, my goodness. Haman, the entire world, as far as he's concerned, was bowing down to him. And he wasn't happy. He was the most miserable. Why? Because the one guy that wouldn't bow down Mordecai drove him nuts. How many people do you know they're given everything? I can't believe it, really, when you think about it. Some of these movie stars, sports stars, they have everything. And they blow it. They blow it. Uh, it's just horrible. And here Haman has everybody bowing down to him, and he's not happy. He's not happy. Matter of fact, listen to Esther 3, verse 5, and listen to this about sight. When Haman saw that Moses did not bow nor did him reverence, Haman was full of wrath. This guy, he wasn't happy that 99% of the world bowed down to him. He was unhappy because Mordecai didn't. 
How many of you know the eye is never satisfied? It isn't. Uh, it, it's amazing. And, and I call this the Haman principle when we are never satisfied with what we have unless we have it all. Some people, the neighbor, they have to have what the neighbor has or else they're not happy. They don't know how to be happy with what they have. Do you know who else suffered from this? Who else suffered from this? Adam and Eve. God gave them every single flipping tree in the garden and they weren't satisfied. They wanted the one forbidden tree. Can you imagine? They were given every single tree of the garden but one and they lusted after the one forbidden tree that God said is mine. They weren't satisfied unless they could have that tree. Well, listen to Genesis 2, 16 and 17. <coughs> the Lord commanded the man saying, look, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will not eat of it. In the day you eat of it, you will surely die. I don't know if there was a thousand trees or 10,000 trees in the garden, but could you imagine a thousand trees all bearing great fruit? You can have any one of them, but God says, not this one. It reminds me of teenagers. The one thing you tell them not to do, that's the first thing they do, you know. Well, here, look at this. Now listen to Genesis 3, 6. And when the woman saw, sight, she saw the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit and ate and gave also to her husband with her and did eat. And what does it say in verse 7 of Genesis 3? The eyes of both of them were opened. And they knew they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now listen to Genesis 3, 11. This is mind blowing. Did you know Haman is mentioned in Genesis? The very name is Haman principle. Just like every seed, a tree looks different than the seed. Okay. But everything that's happened in this world, you can find its seed in Genesis in the garden. Get a load of this. In the very verse... Genesis 3, chapter 11, where God says to Adam and Eve, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree whereof I commanded that you should not eat? Or have you eaten from the tree? The very verse where he says, have you eaten from the tree is where we find Haman's name. Get a load of this PowerPoint. Here we are. Now I want you to see Haman's name. I have it underlined in English. And on the top, you see the second word from the right, Haman, the letter Hay, Mem, and Noon. I have it spelled Haman going backwards because that's how English is going the other, Hebrew goes the other direction. Does everyone see Haman and how to spell Haman's name? Hay, Mem, Noon. Do you see that? So that's how you spell Haman's name. Now let's go to Genesis 3, verse 11. And what do we find right here of the tree? Tree is Etz. The tree is ha'etz. We see right there, hameen ha'etz. You have Haman's name is literally in the garden where God is talking about people who are never satisfied with what they have. This is mind blowing to me. Right there, you see Haman's name mentioned from the tree. This is, this is a Haman principle. People who are never satisfied with what they have. They live by their sight. And this is all about the month of Tammuz. And it's all found in the garden. So this next month, what we want to do as we commit the month of Tammuz to the Lord, which is a pagan God name, this is a month where don't... How many of you know you can't believe everything you see on the fake news? You can't believe every image and video. I tell you what, I believe this month is going to be a media onslaught of things that you're not going to be, you're not going to believe it. And I tell you what, we can't go by our eyes. This is the month to be breaking as Messiah is coming sooner and sooner. We need to be forgetting about what we see on the television. Look at the spirit behind it and be praying uh, that we also don't judge by the sight of our eyes. We need to have the spiritual insight to know what's going on. So with that said... Uh, let's close uh, with this uh, new moon with the ironic benediction. So uh, let's pray. 
Ivarekaka Adonai Vaish Mareka, Yaer Adonai Pana Vileka Vichuneka, Isa Adonai Pana Vileka Viasem Laka Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In that most wonderful name, Ayeh Asher Ayeh. May this month of Tammuz, may you find your peace and your rest, and may you learn to walk not by sight, uh, but by keeping your eyes looking up at the Lord. Amen.